Yeah, hey, Mark. Yeah, I thought it was a great showing uh, by the president. Uh, something I'd been really rooting for for the last uh, couple of weeks in terms of him just laying out the things that he's actually gotten done in just uh, in just four years, but holding holding Vice President Biden to account uh, for his terrible record and for you know, for all of the things that he complains about, uh, whether it's uh, justice reform or health care or you know you name it, uh, that he hasn't gotten done. And he had eight years as the Vice President of the United States and forty seven years in government, uh, and and that was uh, that was fantastic to see that all kind of pulled out and teased out, and the and the president to hold him to account for uh, all his time. Now you're going to be traveling with the president, uh, I guess. Uh, as he comes back to Florida, um, I, I know that the vice president is also going to do something, I think, in Lakeland tomorrow. So you'll be with the president today? We'll be with the president today at the Villages uh, this afternoon, uh, just, you know, uh, over there near Ocala uh, for for another rally. Uh, so that'll be that'll be fantastic. And then uh, we'll be back in Volusia tomorrow in Ormond for a get out the vote. Uh, a rally, mini rally, I guess. Uh, the president will vote early in Palm Beach uh, tomorrow, and he's going to simulcast uh, uh, a, a rally out to a bunch of different locations around the states with surrogates, and I'll be one of those in uh, in Ormond Beach. So everybody come out across from the library, and uh, let's go vote. Yeah, by the way, just a quick follow-up. What does this uh, speak to you in this election about how Republicans have come out in such large numbers so early? Well, it really is a, a a red wave in terms of early voting. Uh, we're seeing every day, we're seeing we're making up that gap on raw voting numbers uh, between Republicans and the Democrats, where the Democrats have pushed a lot of their votes into vote by mail. Uh, we think they're cannibalizing or they're taking from their early voting in person and their day of election in person. So we can see, Mark, how many high propensity voters are still out there, either with ballots or that typically come in and vote in person. And I think we're going to we're every day uh, we're making up that gap very quickly. And I think at the end of the day, we're going to we're it's going to be a squeaker. It's going to be tight. But I think we're going to pull out uh, Florida for the president. Congressman Waltz, uh, tell us about this FBI investigation and what we learned uh, the night before last is are we going to know anything definitively before election day? Is this going to factor into the decision by the American people as to who they elect for president? Well, I've requested a classified briefing uh, from the FBI before the election to know more. Uh, and you know, Mark, and we've talked. I've I've uh, sponsored a bill called the Alerts Act that will mandate that the American people are notified when this happened. I want to give kudos to the administration for having a public briefing. The Obama administration did not when two Florida counties were hacked back in 2016 uh, and for building an infrastructure that detects it in the first place, uh, you know, since then. But at the end of the day, uh, you know, our adversaries, uh, China, Russia, Iran, are taking advantage of and trying to hit us uh, it, at the heart of our democracy, at the heart of our republic, and that's in, in our election infrastructure, it needs to stop. I think we need to reestablish deterrence and let them know, hey, we can flick the lights in the Kremlin or the Ayatollah's palace too. Uh, but in the meantime, we want to know more what's happened. It appears that Iran uh, used a spoofing email uh, pretending to be this group, the Proud Boys, to intimidate, try to intimidate Democrats. And really what it was was to cause blowback on the president. Uh, because Iran wants Biden in. You know, Iran wants relief from the maximum pressure campaign of President Trump, and they want the, the good old days of Biden-Obama when they were receiving billions in cash uh, for very little in return, you know, and back to that to, to the terrible Iran deal. And a, a quick add to that, this is not the first time yeah. that you've worked in a bipartisan manner uh, working with Democrat Congresswoman Stephanie Murphy. The both of you are working together, so this crosses party lines. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I wish. I, yeah, I should have said that, that uh, this isn't a Republican or Democrat issue. I think there are certain countries out there that have a preference. But at the end of the day, it's the American people that choose. Uh, and uh, election interference is a crime domestically. And we have to put a stop to these foreign powers. 
uh, trying to do it uh, externally. But what I, my point, Mark, is, is that the American people need to know what these foreign powers are trying to do is so discord and put doubt out there that your vote counts. And so the public needs to be notified uh, when this happens. Congressman, what's the latest on a COVID stimulus? Are we really going to see anything before Election Day? Not looking good. Uh, I'll be. I'm not going to. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm beyond frustrated with it. The uh, Senate Republicans put just a very uh, skinny, very targeted bill uh, for just PPP. There's 135 billion dollars, Mark, sitting there from the CARES Act. Ready to ready to go help small businesses. All they uh, Pelosi has to do is give the green light that businesses can go get another bite at that apple. Uh, and uh, and unfortunately, Democrats in uh, the Senate blocked it. Uh, um, so it's just beyond. It's she's just taking a, a my way or the highway, all or nothing approach. You know, another two and a half trillion or or zero, and that's sad. And that's unfortunate. I also wanted to uh, go going back to last night. One thing that we really didn't hear a lot about it. That's a a major thing for the American people to hear is the president's success in reducing Medicare costs and the cost of insulin that's going to hit in January. That never really became clear to the audience because of the interruptions. I I think from Kristen Walker. I think she did an okay job, but the president was never able to get on track to sell that to the american people a lot of folks don't know this it's a big thing for the american people yeah no it's a huge thing it's a huge thing for seniors i would refer everyone to the president's speech last week down in fort myers where he really laid out what he's able to, been able to do on executive orders now that's limited at the end of the day we need real legislation uh, and, uh, you know, I supported a bill called H.R. 19. I would encourage everybody to look it up. And it went after things like, you know, big pharmaceuticals can pay generic drug makers not to pay uh, or not to do generic drugs so that they can make more money uh, uh, you know, on the front end on their brand name drugs. Things like that that are that are you, you came out of committee unanimously. Uh, need to stop. So the president made some important steps, and you're right. He deserves a lot more credit for it. Uh, but really, Mark, sadly, Congress has got to do its job and come to a, uh, an agreement. And, um, you yeah, know, we'll keep pounding away. Congressman Mike Waltz will be with the president later today, and then he'll be in Ormond Beach tomorrow. We'll remind folks to come out and say hello. Uh, stay healthy, stay well, and congratulations. We'll be talking with you really soon, sir. Hey, thanks, Mark, and everybody get out. Vote, 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 please. All right. Congressman Mike Waltz, have a great day, sir. All right. We okay, are gonna, thanks, Mark. Thank you.